Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Tor browser to maintain your online security, privacy, and anonymity. So let's jump right in. Okay, so everybody wants privacy, okay? That's why windows have curtains and bathrooms have doors. So many of us have been led to believe that wanting online privacy is somehow wrong or criminal, that the only people that want online privacy are drug dealers, money launderers, international terrorists, but that's a fallacy. Everybody deserves privacy. Everybody needs privacy. In fact, many believe that privacy is a God-given right and it's very difficult using modern browsers. Now, one alternative is the Brave browser, which is a great privacy-oriented browser that blocks ads and tracking by default. But if you want to delve a little deeper, if you want to improve your online security and keep things private, the things that you want to keep private, your reading habits, your video habits, your buying habits, then you want to go a little step further and go with the Tor browser. All right, so the first thing I'll point out is there's a link in the description for privacytools.io, which is a great website that talks about online privacy, why it matters, and you know a lot of the things that we do online that are exposing us uh, to surveillance. So I'd like you to check out this website you know, just to give yourself a little intro to what online privacy is all about. So here's the Tor browser. This is the software that we're gonna install on our computer, which will act as our window to the internet and provide us with online anonymity, privacy, and security. Now you also might want to pair this with a VPN or a virtual private network. Now I use NordVPN. You have to sign up for a VPN. It's gonna cost you some money, but it's not required, but it is suggested, all right? So it gives you a, an encrypted tunnel to one of their servers. So it's quite easy for your internet service provider to tell that you're using Tor. So if you want to protect your communications a little more, you might wanna use uh, a VPN. And also, you want a VPN when you're using your laptop at a coffee shop and you're using uh, an open Wi-Fi network. Let's say you're buying something on Amazon or checking your bank account. You definitely want to have a VPN when you're doing those sort of things to protect your communication from online hackers and snoopers. But it doesn't really provide you with online anonymity. So we want the one-two punch of the virtual private network and the Tor browser. All right, so here's the Tor homepage. Uh, I invite you to check out this web page and uh, read up about what Tor is and what online privacy is all about. Uh, we'll go over here to Windows. We'll just click that. All right, and it's just going to download the latest version of the Tor browser for us. Um, you can choose which directory you want to use. I usually like to drop my stuff in the Downloads folder. We'll just hit Save, and there it goes. Now that's fine for most people, and if you want to just follow along, because I'm going to show you how to verify this download, which is I consider very important. So let's go back here and look at this SIG. And what is that, right? So I'm going to hit SIG, and it shows me this PGP signature. So it's a little weird, right? Uh, but this is a encryption technique that verifies that I'm downloading the proper version of the Tor browser. So I'll go back here and I'm just going to right click it and choose save link as. Now you'll notice it has the exact same name as the Tor browser that we just downloaded, but it's an ASC extension. So I'm going to hit save here. And then if you scroll down a little bit here, they've got this verify Tor browser signature, right? Which gives us instructions on how we verify that little signature file that they gave us. All right, they explain what that's all about. Now we're gonna to need to install some tools and they give us some links here. So the first tool that we're gonna need is a GNU PG privacy software. I've got a link to this in the description. Uh, it's a great website, you can check it out. 
Uh, these are encryption privacy tools, right, for verifying uh, cryptographic and digital signatures. All right, so, but we, what, what I want in particular, and what most of you probably want, is the Windows version of this software. I'm going to go ahead and click this download button here. All right, now you can donate here, and I highly encourage that. It's a great piece of software. It's open source. Uh, but we can also hit zero and just go straight to download. Now you'll notice here that uh, if we're going to download some software to check the integrity of our Tor browser, what about the integrity of this software, right? We might be downloading something that doesn't have integrity, right? So there's a little guide here on checking the integrity of the GPG for Windows. I'm going to go down here where it has uh, SHA-256 checksums. And there's the one we want for the version that I just downloaded right there the Windows installer. All right, and then I'm going to go over here to this online SHA SUM checker. And I'm going to choose File. And I'm going to choose that GPG for Windows that I just downloaded. It's going to run a hash, but I want the 256 hash. And gives me the result here. That's my personal local result that I just ran on my local file. I want to take the one that they gave me this one that they provided online and match it to the one that I just generated locally. So we'll go back over here, we'll paste that guy in and hit compare and we get that green check. That just knows that we downloaded a good version of the GPG for Windows. All right, so now that we've got the installer downloaded and we checked it with the SHA SUM checker, let's go ahead and run the install. All right, and then when it says completed, you can hit next and go ahead and reboot your computer. All right, after you've done your reboot, let's go back to the instructions here. Uh, for Windows users, we just downloaded and installed GPG for Windows. And then they give you some instructions here for getting the Tor Browser Developer signing key. They give you command lines, which you can do in the Windows command line, but there are some easier ways to do it. So you can just launch Cleopatra which gets installed with your GPG tools. Okay, Okay. well they get installed separately. It's under K for Cleopatra, which is fine. So you can just, and you can see that I've already installed some of this stuff. It's no big deal. Uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and make your own key. And basically it just wants uh, your name and email address. And then you can just use that for uh, validating other keys. All right, and once you've done that, you can do, uh, you can get the Tor browser. You can see I've got a lot of keys on there. Don't worry about it. Yours will probably be empty except for the personal one that you've created. So uh, the easiest way is to just take this key that they give here, the Tor browser developer key, and just paste it into Cleopatra. Just do a file lookup on server out of the way just paste it in there and hit search and it's most likely going to find the browser the Tor browser developers keys these are the signing keys okay so you've got the file you've got the signature file that ASC file that we downloaded and then you have the signing key so you need three things <laughs> go figure all right so you can just click on that and click import all right and then you get this little uh, pop up here that explains how you uh, are going to certify this developer key. So we can call the developer if we want to, uh, if they give it to you on their business card, um, confirm it on a trusted website, which is what we're going to do. Uh, we're basically just want to match that fingerprint, right? So we'll click yes here. And we're just going to certify it by clicking these two, and there it says, I have verified the fingerprint, okay? So they're giving us the fingerprint down here, and we can look at it on the Tor browser website. All right, so there it is, right, on the Tor, right, Tor site. That's the fingerprint, EF6E, right? EF6E286DD286DD. -E so that's the fingerprint that we got on this trusted website. So we downloaded it, we checked the fingerprint, and we can click I have verified the fingerprint and click next. And we'll just go ahead and certify it for ourselves. And we must enter the passphrase that we set up on our personal key. All right, and then you certified that the, the developer signing key.
right? So now that you've done that, we'll go ahead and uh, verify the file that we downloaded along with that uh, signature file that we also downloaded. Now, uh, they give you some long commands for doing that, and you could cut and paste them into your window, but it's much easier to do with Cleopatra. So you just want to verify that you've got both files in the same directory next to each other, the Tor installer and the Tor signature file. All right. So uh, now all we need to do is use Cleopatra. We'll go to Decrypt Verify. And we'll just navigate over to that file that we downloaded. There it is, the Tor Browser Installer. So we'll just click on that and we'll choose Open. And now it's going to verify that file using those two files that we have next. All right, and there we go. So we got a nice green box that explains that the file has been verified. I'm sorry if that uh, was a little cryptic to some, but uh, you're welcome to skip this step. But I would recommend doing the full verification on your Tor browser installer before you run it. All right, now we're ready to install the Tor browser. Let's go ahead and double click it. All right, now the default, if you'll notice here, the default is the desktop. You may not really want this on your desktop. What I like to do is maybe just put it on your C drive so that it's not just hanging out there on your desktop. So you can click on your C drive and choose OK. And there it's just going to put the Tor folder on your C drive, right? Or your D drive if you have other drives. But most people just have a C drive. And then we hit Install. All right, and then we can add the start menu and desktop shortcuts if we want to and run the Tor browser. We'll hit finish. All right, now uh, before we start the Tor browser, I like to go to configure. Give yourself a little added security. Uh, just tell them Tor is censored in your country and then it's going to let you choose a bridge. This is a more secure way of using the Tor browser. You could try this Meek Azure, but I like the OBFS4. It's going to automatically create a bridge when you connect to Tor. So now we can just click Connect, see that it uh, used the bridge, and it connected to Tor. Now, uh, down here, you can see it running. I just like to click that and maybe just uh, pin to taskbar, keep it neat, and then I really don't need this shortcut. I mean, if you're going to use Tor and be private, you really don't want that on your desktop where people walking by will see that you're using Tor. The fact that we use the Tor browser, we kind of like to keep private. So now we got the Tor browser installed and running. Like I said, if you want to add a little extra layer of security, you would connect to your VPN before running Tor. But it's not required. You can just simply run Tor and greatly increase your privacy and security. All right, so now that we've got Tor, I just want to show you some Tor addresses. The best place to start is the hidden wiki. So the hiddenwiki.org is a clear nut site. Uh, it's not an encrypted website. Your browser is using encryption, but you're going to a clear net site. We want the encryption on both ends. We want to be accessing onion sites. You'll notice all these dresses down here have onion in them. They're not .coms, they're .onions. All right, so you can see there's two hidden wikis. I kind of like this one, Hidden Wiki Tor Wiki. We'll just uh, click on that one. All right, I kind of like this one. It's a little more organized. But you can see here that we're on an onion site and so all we're we're connecting from an encrypted computer to another encrypted web server. So all our traffic is private and anonymous. And you can look uh, down in here and go to all of these different sites. Just keep in mind that when you go to a site, you want to see that onion at the end, right? You can browse ClearNut websites, right? I could go to uh, apple.com if I want to, right? And Apple.com will just see some anonymous Tor browser connecting. Won't know who he is, where he is, and that kind of stuff. But it's a clear net site. So if I were to go on here and enter my personal information to buy a laptop, then I've sort of defeated the whole purpose of using an encrypted browser, right? We want to only connect to other Onion sites and privately browse the internet. So there's some great stuff you can read here. 
I'll go ahead and put this link in my description in case you have some trouble finding it. But hopefully uh, everything will uh, work out and you'll be able to browse the web anonymously. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments. I'll do my best to get them answered. Happy anonymous surfing out there, guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that would allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.